Good morning, and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Grant, and I both invite and encourage you to come walk with me on the road to wisdom. Come on, y'all. Let's get to walking. Good morning. Good morning. It's a new month. It is May the 1st, 2024. I'm telling you, man, the year is flying. Man, it just started off in 2024. We almost at the halfway point of the year. At the next month, we will be at the six-month mark. And I'm telling you, man, time is flying. But thank you all for joining me on another edition of The Road to Wisdom. Like I said, I'm your host, Danny Graham. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, as you can see, topic I'm talking about is, can you see your spiritual growth? You as a Christian, can you see your spiritual growth from the time that you gave your life to the Lord to the time Right now, today, every as we as I'm doing this show, can you see any spiritual growth? The answer should be for all of us, yes. If we're not seeing any spiritual growth, depending on the time frame, then we need to, to really buckle down and focus and, and do things that's going to increase and enhance our spiritual growth. Just like any other thing, just like you're going to be in law enforcement, just like you're going to be a preacher, just like you're going to be a teacher, just like you're going to be a football player, a basketball player, a baseball player, a dancer. Whatever profession you choose to be, whatever hobby you choose to be, you gotta you gotta practice on it. How many times have we spent hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands of dollars, on some of our hobbies? For instance, I got a, some people that I know that love to play golf, and from what I'm told, golf is a pretty expensive hobby to have, as far as the green fees, as far as buying the clubs, as far as buying the balls, uh, golf carts if you want to. Uh, if you bring your own golf cart, or I know you can rent them there. If you play two or three times a day, it can be very pricey, not to, spend, not to mention the golf shoes and all the other stuff that comes with it. Now, of course, if you're a big-time golfer and you got sponsors and that kind of stuff, then some of that cost, I guess, um, is not as bad. But if you're just playing it for a hobby recreationally, then it can be quite expensive. Same thing for fishing. I'm a fisherman. And, and those fishing rods, some of them you can get cheap, but if you get a cheap fishing rod, you're probably going to break it or snap it. I've done that in the past. So if you go ahead and you invest in three or four nice uh, fishing rods, um, I'm currently looking at a boat. I hope I can be able to to get that boat. And if I can get it, that, that's thousands of dollars with upkeep, gas. And if you get bait, tackles, all, all additional stuff, all of the costs, it can be quite expensive. So the time and energy and the money that we spend into our hobbies, do we have that same time and energy and money into our spiritual growth? Because a lot of times we hang out at a lot of people hang out at places where Jesus is at. They go to church. They think, because, but it's not because they want to, but because it's out of habit, because it's tradition, because Mama did it, because Daddy did it, because my brother does it, because my sister does it. Not going for the real reason. And the real reason is to have the Spirit poured into you to, to re-energize you, to keep you going from Sunday to Sunday, and and with that energy that is being poured into you. You need to take that energy and spread the word and, and share it with share God's word with other people. When you start doing that, then you start seeing yourself grow. People that are that are taking religions religion seriously and is taking God seriously and knowing that He is coming back and they want to be in the book of life, they're going to do things to increase their spiritual growth. One thing you can definitely do by increasing um, your spiritual growth and see a a, a, a growth in your spiritual growth, so to, so to speak, is praying, praying, reading the Bible every day. I, I, I don't read the Bible every day. I'm not going to sit here and lie and try to front, but I try to read different aspects of the Bible or I try to listen to sermons or, or, or religious things to try and get me in a mindset so I can produce these shows. But I'm trying to read the Bible every day. I'm trying to listen to my devotion every day. Um, right now I have the Bible in front of me now. And I want to read from the book of James the first chapter, the, sec the second to the 18th verse. And it talks about uh, this topic we're talking about today, spiritual growth and some things that God expects of us. I want to read a little bit of it for those. James, the first chapter, the second to the 18th verse. And it reads as follows. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work. You may be perfect and entire, 
wanting nothing. Let me read that again. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally. And unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he who wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not the man that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Ooh, I'm going to say it again. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withers the grass. And the flower thereof falls, and the grace of the fashion on it perishes. So all shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them who loves him. Let no man say that when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempts he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has convinced, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of fruit, fist, fruit, fist fruits of his creatures. That is James, the first chapter, the second to the 18th verse. And I want to go back to read one particular verse. Chapter 14, and it reads as follows, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed that when he lusts, has convinced, it brings forth sin. When it breaks down to basically saying, the temptation to sin appeals to a moral defect in, in us. You gotta, we gotta just, we're naturally drawing some of us, all, no, all of us, to some certain kind of sin. And we must constantly keep fighting that because none of us are perfect. It also says, speaks of evil lust. As stated, these temptations do not come with God. God is the, does not tempt us with any kind of evil. But from the appetites of man's sinful nature, which is a result of the fall, the sin nature can be held at bay and is meant to be held at bay by the believer, anchoring his faith in the cross of Christ, which will be then given the Holy Spirit latitude to help. So I want to focus on fourteen, chapter 14 to 15. A lot of us know the Bible backwards and forward. A lot of us go to church. A lot of us do all of these things, and we appear to be walking with God and knowing God, but we really don't know God. Because our spiritual development, our spiritual growth is stunning. It's still the same way because we're in, in, in the light. We're acting, like we're acting one way, but in the dark, we're acting a total, a total another way. If you think you're fooling God, then you are really a fool and you're fooling yourself because God knows everything. Recently, I, a friend of mine sent me a video. And these people, they, they admitted to be atheists. And they were talking about before God created everything, everything was perfect. But then he got kind of bored and was just, just saying in a very disrespectful tone. And they were saying that, oh, man, once he created one universe, he got bored with that universe and created another universe. And he did this. And he does that. Like God can't forget anything. Like God doesn't know what's going on. And if he created a hundred universes, God knows what's going on in every universe he creates, every mind he creates, every person he creates, every animal, every insect, every cell, every amoeba. God knows what's going on. But they were talking, they were trying to put, they were trying to put natural things and earthly things and compare it 
to God, the supernatural things. It, it, it didn't make any sense. It was totally disrespectful when I heard I say, those people are going to hell unless something happens. Because they were just talking in a very disrespectful tone. I wish I could pull up that particular video. I'll try and find it, and, and I will put it on the show and let you hear what they were saying in, a, in, a, in one of my uh, next clips, in my next videos. But getting back to um, the two chapters we're talking about sin, um, in order to come back, to combat sin, we have to keep growing in our faith, keep growing in our spiritual faith, keep rejuvenating us, rejuvenating ourselves by going to church, by by praying, by reading God's word. Like I said, sometimes um, life it can it can get um, kind of push on the back shelf, so to speak. But you got to set aside time. You got to set aside time. You got to set aside a particular day. You got to make sure that you stay in touch with God and create. And, and, and keep uh, nourishing and keep um, um, enhancing your relationship and your communication with God. Because if you don't, this world, it can slowly push him out and push, like it said, all your wants and, and desires in, in that's not God-like at all, because we are prone to sin. After the fall, after Adam and Eve had the fall from, uh, from the Garden of Eden, we have all have been prone. Uh, it goes down from... From, from Adam and Eve all the way down to now, we are all prone to sin. And the only way to combat that sin is to make sure we anchor ourselves in God's word. And when we do make mistakes, uh, we can't keep wallowing in that same mistake and keep just staying in there and get comfortable in that mistake. Because if we get comfortable in that mistake, then we're definitely going to fall. We're definitely going to fall out of grace. And we're definitely going to push ourselves away from God. And, and like I said in earlier videos, God gives us free will. Um, he gives us an opportunity because he doesn't want to just snap his fingers and, and let us instantly love him. It's not a real love. It's a, a forced love. God does not want a forced love. God does not want a forced relationship with us. He wants for us to come to him freely. We come to him freely and we worship him and we, we do things in accordance with what, how he wants us to do. Then God's going to bless us. He's going to, to reward us. Um, the main reward that we should, all should be looking for is having our name put in the book of life and going to heaven. That should be the final and the most important reward um, ever that we're going for. But there are some people that are going to miss the boat. There's some people that are going to think that they can um, rationalize and they can um, use um, critical thinking to try to um, be logical about how God works and how he, or how he does not work or how he can, he should be doing this, how he should be doing that. To even question God, to me, is blasphemous. And some of these people are questioning God, like, if God was to do this, then why is he letting this and why is he doing this? It's all in God's plan. None of us on this planet, no matter how smart we think we are, no matter how high our IQ may be, no matter how rich we may be, we are not omnipotent. We don't know what the other person is thinking. We can kind of Yes, based on some of the actions and some of the things they say, a lot of us can be in the ballpark, but to know exactly what someone is thinking, none of us have that power. God knows what we're thinking. Even when he allows us to come from heaven as a baby and be born here on earth, he knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're going to become. He knows what we're going to do. He knows all our faults. He knows all our, our strengths. He knows all our weaknesses, and he knows who's going to be in the book of life and who's not. But he's given us a chance by sending his son to Jesus who died on the cross. He gave us a chance. He gave us a way for all our sins to be forgiven. And if we pray to his son, Jesus, and we give our life to Jesus, then that is our way. That is our cheat code, so to speak, into getting to heaven. But you got to do what the Bible says. The Bible, this is, like I said on our last video, here's the rule book right here. Some of us, we are football, we are armchair quarterbacks. We know the NFL rules backwards and forth. We know the, the NBA rules backwards and forth. We know the base MLB rules backwards and forth. You know the wrestling rules backwards and forth. That laws, I know some of the laws backwards and forth. But do we know the Bible backwards and forth? And if we do know it backwards and forth, a lot of us disobey the Bible. Now, you know if you disobey the law, there's a penalty. Sometimes the penalty can be severe. Sometimes it can be minor. But if you disobey this, this, this law, God's law, and you die before you get it corrected, then you know what's going to happen. You're going to purgatory, going to the hot place, and you're going to be there for eternity. Why take that chance? 
Why act like you're doing something? Why act like you're having a relationship with God when you know you really don't? Because you're not fooling us. <clears throat> you're not fooling God. Well, maybe, well, let me change that. You're trying to fool us, and some of and some of us you are fooling, but you're not fooling God. So I, I implore everyone that is a Christian and those who aren't Christians to become Christians. And once you become Christian, when I became saved for that first week or week and a half, maybe two weeks, man, I felt so full. If I could listen to any spiritual song, I, I would bust out crying. I'd be walking on doing my exercise and listening to the headset to a song and tears would be well up in my eyes. If I watch a TV show, I'd be crying. Um, and, and my mom and my parents said that that's the Holy Spirit dealing with you, Danny. And it's not going to always stay on you because the Holy Spirit cannot always stay on you. If it, <laughs> I think it would kill you because, I mean, it, it's such a powerful feeling. It's such a, a good feeling of emotion that, I mean, you just can't stand it 24-7. You, you just can't. But when it's on you, it is a good feeling. I mean, you feel so thankful. You feel so, so, so calm and at peace. That when I that day, like I said, that week of when I first got saved, I, there was a peace and a calmness about me that I never felt before. And I knew that that something had changed in me because earlier in my life, um, you know, some some people say if you say a certain prayer, if you do this and that, that yes, you're saved. But I didn't feel nothing. I tried that probably twenty years ago. I remember, I was. I remember, I was a truck driver driving for Swift Transportation. Went to a place, and this guy was like, "Oh, you thought about the Bible?" And I was like, "Yeah, I was in my twenties and stuff." Yeah, well, you know, if you say this, this, and this, then you're saved. So I said what he said, and yeah, you're saved. Congratulations, congratulations. And he was more happy than I was. I didn't feel anything. I felt the same way like Danny. And I went and told my grandma at that time she was living, and she's like, "Yeah." Okay, because she know <laughs> I had changed. But last year, April 21st, when when I went to that office and I sat down and I gave my life to God, I could feel the pressure I was on. I could feel a weight lifted. And I tell you, for one week, man, I felt like a million bucks. It, it, was, it was fantastic. That, that feeling is addictive, and I want to, to be – close in the vicinity of that so so when god was working with when god is working with me i can feel that and because it's a wonderful feeling and you have to if you want that feeling and you want to be connected to that feeling then you have to study his word you have to read the bible you have to um, surround yourself with people that are tapped into that that are doing good things um, that are living a righteous life as best we can because like i said none of us are perfect we all are prone to, to doing sinful things. It could be anger. It could be gluttony. It could be um, not being faithful. It could be lying. It could be stealing. It could be pornography. It could be anything that you know isn't righteous and may be our personal demon that we're dealing with. But stay anchored to God. Stay anchored. To pray. If you're praying, God will give you the, the tools and the mechanisms to cope with that and to eventually get that out of your system. But you have to develop and you have to have spiritual growth if you just don't put in the work you just stay there and this thing is going to come to you automatically then you're fooling yourself if you want to play baseball if you want to play any kind of sports you have to practice that to become better if you don't practice that to become better or prepare yourself or study or research things you're not going to be better you have to research the bible you have to study the bible you have to go to different sources um they have the correct doctrine because there are going to be some 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 things some people out there some things out there that's going to sound good but they're not quite right so if you get that feeling in your in your gut or in your belly or your spider senses start tingling like, oh, that don't sound right then I encourage you to 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 pay attention to that and be aware of that and you try to find something else you try to find someone to latch on to that that seems to have a good spirit God's going to lead you. God will lead you to other people that have the right spirit that he's that that he wants and he approves of. So you got to find that person. Kind of like if you ever watched that movie called The War Room. Um, it's an older lady, and God sent the young the younger lady, the the, the wife in this movie, to that older lady, and the older lady t taught her how to pray and taught her how to fought, fight for a marriage the correct way. And she prayed to God and, and just watched the movie. But that is a prime example of God putting people in your life to point you in the right direction. When you may be 
maybe when you maybe feel like you've hit the wall and you have hit the wall, um, and there's there's a person that can fix any problem. Any wall that you think you ran into, he can knock it down. He can remove that wall. He can close that door. He can open another door. He can make you and you know, let you walk straight on through. But you have to have faith in him. You have to pray to him. You have to have to put it at his feet and let him do his thing. A lot of times you want to interfere with it and try and speed it up ourselves. You can't do that. God is always on time. I've said that once. I've said it twice. I've said it a hundred times. God does things on his own timetable, not our timetable. But again, question of the day is, can you see your spiritual growth? Can others see your spiritual growth? If they can't, and if you can't, then you need to work on some things. We all need to work on some things. We all can get better. And, and, and we all can have a spurt in our spiritual growth. Let's just make sure that we keep going forward, not going backwards. So that's just my two cents on that. I sure hope that um, it resonated with some of you and that you definitely enjoy today's show. I'll be back on Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Road to Wisdom. And before I get out of here, I want to uh, tell you one thing. There's some people in our life that think that heaven does not exist. There's some people that think that God doesn't exist. There's some people that doesn't believe God exists. They think the Bible is a bunch of junk and they're just doing things, just thinking that there's not going to be any kind of consequences. I feel sorry for those individuals because I am a believer. I do believe that there is a heaven and hell. And I do believe that if we don't live a certain way, that when God comes back, when Jesus comes back, that a lot of us, loved ones, um, husband, wives, daughters, sisters, sons, brothers, cousins, whatever, relationship, whatever friendship there may be, some of them, some of us are not going to make it. I intend on making it. I intend on, um, well, I am sharing God's word and spreading God's word. And I'm trying to definitely get my family and friends, everyone to realize that God is on the throne and that God is always watching. And God knows what day, what time, what hour he's going to come back. And I just hope and pray that all my loved ones and everyone um, under the sound of this, my voice that's listening, that takes heed to it and, and, is, and is a God-fearing person and will get their life correct. But there are some of us, uh, there are some that will not do that. There are some that's going to not heed God's word, not heed God's warning, and they're going to go down to hell. It's, it's sad, but it's true. But if you encounter someone in your in in your walks of life, someone at work, someone you see walking down the street, someone you encounter at, at a grocery store or whatever, they're talking a lot, of, a lot of nonsense about the Bible, about Jesus, about God. This is something that you can tell them. You can tell those individuals that I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. That comes from Pastor Gordy Bacham. You can check him out on YouTube. He has a lot of good sermons on there. Very, very informative. Now, if this is the first time you've ever seen me on my channel, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to ask you to also hit the notification bell. Also, hit that like button. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. It definitely is a help. Also. Leave a comment. Any comment that you leave, I will read I will read and respond back to you. Watch all my videos from start to finish, because that, again, helps with the YouTube algorithm. And last but not least, share my video with all your friends and family. Well, I hope you had a fantastic day. As always, I love you, and I hope that God will be with you, and God bless you all. I'll be back on Friday morning, 7 a.m. 7 Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Road to Wisdom. Until then, take it easy, and you have a good day.